Acts chapter 16, a very familiar account in the scriptures. We begin our reading in verse 22. The Bible said, And the multitude rose up together against them. Who? Paul and Silas. What are they guilty of? Telling folks about Jesus. Hmm? The crowd rose up together against them, and the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. When they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them in the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. And the keeper of the prison, waking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Good Sunday school hour. God, thank you for these good testimonies. Lord, our hearts have been helped this morning already in the house of God. God, your business isn't finished yet. Lord, I've been satisfied just to dismiss in prayer and go to the house. God, you've spoken to my heart. God, I pray you'd speak to everyone's heart. I pray that, Lord, if there be any in our midst today unsaved, they will not leave that way. Lord, they'd come to the saving knowledge of Christ. God, the Spirit of God has been so sweet around here, and I know what the devil do. He'll do everything in his power to try and distract or disrupt. So I pray you'd bind him the powers of hell, and I pray you'd hedge us in, and I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would continue to move through this place. Rest hearts, and God, do a work, and we'll thank you for what you do, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to just a few things. Paul and Silas have been beaten for their faith. If that'd be most of us, we'd be sucking our thumbs, throwing in the towel, saying God hates us and God's so mean to us. But notice the midnight worship in verse 25. I mean, these fellows have been beaten to within an inch of their life. They're thrown in, into a prison. They've been chained uh, with stocks in the prison. And they're not sucking their thumbs. The Bible says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Notice the midnight worship. They're beaten. Maybe old Silas looked at Paul and said, Paul, you doing okay? He said, Si, everything's all right. He said, uh, let's just have a little prayer meeting here. And they got to calling on God. Got to thanking God for coming to their low estate, Brother Bob. Uh, Paul got to praying and thanking God that when he was on his way to the road to Damascus to kill God's people, uh, uh, the Lord showed up uh, and rebuked him and showed him the error of his way. uh, And the Lord saved him that day. uh, And uh, he got to thanking God uh, uh, for being counted worthy to be beaten for Jesus' sake. uh, Yeah, and they got done a praying, and Paul said, Hey, Silas, sing that song I like. Uh, He got to singing, uh, and God uh, got the blessing in that prison. Uh, Hey, uh, little talk with Jesus. Uh, Little song about Jesus. Uh, It'll lift your spirit, uh, and it'll help you through life's troubles and storms. Uh, We see some midnight worship. Now notice the miracle in this text. Look at verse number 26. The Bible says... And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. We see a great earthquake. You think that's by any coincidence? You know what happened? God got in on the prayer meeting. God got in on the singing. Uh, 
God said, hey, that prayer's sweet. Uh, 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 it's a sweet-smelling savor. Uh, hey, uh, and that singing's a touch of my heart. Uh, and the Bible says that God inhabits the praise uh, of Israel. Uh, and God said, uh, they're a praising me. Uh, I'm just going to get in on it. Uh, and God left glory uh, and walked into the prison. Uh, and the presence of God was so wonderful uh, that an earthquake took place uh, and it broke up the prison. Uh, hey, when God shows up, uh, it'll break up some things in your life too. Uh, we see the miracle. God showed up. Hmm? We see the midnight worship. Uh, notice the marvel though. Look again in verse 26. The Bible says, The prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. Hmm? The Bible says, And the keeper of the prison, waking out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors were open, he drew out a sword, would have killed himself, supposing that all the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, uh, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Hmm? The prison guard took out his sword to kill himself because those men had been put in his charge. And he knew if any of them had escaped, then uh, what the Roman government would do to him would be far worse than him taking his own life. But the marvel is, the prison doors are opened, everyone's chains fall off of them, but they all stayed. I don't know about you. I've never been in jail where they kept me. Unlike some of you, and I won't call out any names, where they may have kept you or they should have kept you. But I imagine if I'm in a prison, and by the way, the prisons back then didn't have closed circuit TV. They didn't have weight rooms. They didn't give you three square meals a day. Uh, you were in the muck and mire of a dungeon. Uh, 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 the tastiest thing around you was a rat. Uh, 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 you were chained up, uh, most like you'd been beaten. Uh, uh, and here are these men, they're wounded, they're beaten. Uh, uh, they're hanging out with critters they don't want to hang out with, and they're hanging out with other people they don't want to hang out with. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, there's a couple lunatic Baptists on down a couple cells uh, uh, praying and uh, singing, uh, and uh, God shows up in the midst of it, uh, the doors flung open, uh, uh, the stocks fall off. Uh, I can imagine every one of them say, boys, let's get out of here while we can. Uh, but they didn't. You say, preach out, you know God showed up. God's presence was so real, even the sinners didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. There was something happening in that cell that even the most vile wanted to hang out and see what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Then we see the muddled Look at this prison, uh, the prison guard. Paul says, Do thyself no harm, we're all here. In verse 29, Then he called for light and sprang in, the prison guard. He came trembling, fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? You see, Paul and Silas was talking to God. Paul and Silas was singing to God. Paul and Silas was in there because of their stand for God. Uh, it was no secret. Uh, but what uh, was happening in that prison cell was affecting everybody around there. The prisoners couldn't leave, uh, and even the prisoner guard. Uh, uh, he'd been listening to what had been going on, uh, drifting off to sleep, and the earthquake happens. Uh, he thinks his life is over. What he did not know is his life was just about to begin. Uh, and he begins to cry out, uh, Hey, fellas, uh, whatever you got, can I have some of that? Uh, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Notice the message, verse 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Now how come preachers make it so hard to get saved? That's a pretty simple message right there. He didn't tell him to go clean up his life. He didn't tell him he had to quit doing this and quit doing that. He didn't tell him he had to jump through some uh, hoops and, and do some cartwheels and do all that. Uh, he gave a very simple message. 
I've got three simple points I want to preach on what it takes to be saved. Hmm? Brother Ray said he got up and thanked God that God put somebody in his life that told him how to be saved. If you're here today and you're saved, it's because God put somebody in your life. Mm, it was by no accident that Paul and Silas got beat and put in that prison. See, you've got to understand the life of Paul. Paul wanted to go to Macedonia before this, and God wouldn't let him go. Why? Because that prisoner guard wasn't ready yet. Hmm? Uh, uh, some events had to take place uh, and then when God let Paul go uh, uh, everything was in order and because of this instant right here a great church was founded there, uh, there in Philippi and God did a great work because the timing was right but make no mistake Paul was there to influence that prisoner guard and God put somebody in your life but what does it take to be saved that's the question of the ages and can I say this? If you look around what's going on in this crazy world and you don't realize Jesus is about to come, friend, you're in trouble. Uh, he could come before the week's out. He could come before the day's out. You ought to ask the question if you're not saved, what must I do to be saved? Can I say, first of all, it takes conviction. Look again in verse 29. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This man was convicted of his sin. He came in trembling. He knew Paul and Silas had something he didn't have. He didn't understand it all, didn't know what it was, but he realized he didn't have it. That's called conviction. Can I say that term conviction embodies uh, several things? First of all, it embodies comprehension. He knew he had a need. Can I say, if you're here today and you're lost and you know that you're not right with God, you're not saved, you don't have what you've experienced other people having, uh, uh, if you realize something's not right down on the inside of heart, that's part of conviction. You are comprehending you have a need in your life. He said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He knew he had a need. There was some comprehension. There's also, in conviction, it embodies condemnation. He knew he wasn't right with God. He said, what must I do to be saved? That term saved means rescued. What must I do to be rescued from my sin? I'm a sinner, I'm lost, uh, and I need to be saved. Uh, what must I do to be saved? You see, no one will ever get saved till they get lost. You've got to be convicted that you're a sinner. Let me help you something. We was all born in sin. Uh, uh, there's none righteous, no, not one. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But when you realize that you're a sinner, when you realize that your sin's going to take you to hell, when you realize that it was your sin that caused Jesus to go to the cross, then you're in a good shape to be saved. It takes conviction. Mm, conviction embodies comprehension. He knew he had a need. It embodies condemnation. He knew he was a sinner. But it also embodies constraint. That means you know you have limitations. You cannot save yourself. He said, what must I do to be saved? I can't do it myself. I can't be saved on my own. Uh, I'm not a good enough person, Tara. I can't do it myself. Uh, a lot of people think, well, I'm a good moral person. Uh, God's going to let me into heaven. No, he's not. Uh, uh, friend, if you go to heaven, it depends on what you do with Jesus Christ in this life, uh, whether or not you believed on the Lord and trusted in him as Lord and Savior. Mm, realized he couldn't get saved by himself. Hmm? There was constraint in his life. He couldn't do enough good works. He couldn't give enough money. He couldn't uh, 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 earn his way into heaven. Neither can you. You see, in order to be saved, it takes conviction. Can I say this? What does it take to be saved? In order to be saved, you've got to make a choice. Look at verse 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thyself. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Hmm? You've got to, my dear friends, make a choice. They said, you want to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. God's not going to put a, a gun to your head and say, you have to get saved. 
But God opens up his arms and says, All ye that labor and heavy labor, come to me, I'll give you rest. He said, Ye that are thirst, come drink of the water of life freely. He's got his arms wide open and said, If you want to be saved, come and you can be saved. He'd no wise cast you out. But you've got to make the choice. Mm -hmm. Will you be saved? Now listen, a lot of people read this story and they'll think, well, I'll get saved when God sends an earthquake. An earthquake, my dear friends, isn't necessarily a big old storm that opens up the doors. An earthquake something that happens down in your heart. God telling you, you need to be saved and you need to make the choice. Mm -hmm. Can I say making a choice uh, embodies this? Relying on. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You've got to rely on what Jesus did, not what you do. Hmm? Jesus Christ, my dear friends, he came, he lived a perfect, sinless life, went to the cross of Calvary, was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures. Uh, he died, he shed his blood for your sin, uh, was buried and overcome death, hell, and the grave for you. Uh, and my dear friends, if you believe on the finished works of Calvary that Jesus died for you, uh, that he rose again, uh, if you rely on what he did, uh, uh, you can be saved today, friend. You've got to believe on him, what he did. You say, that's too simple. I know, God just made it that way. Because if he made it too tough, a bunch of us hillbillies wouldn't have made it in. He made it so simple, even a child to understand. Hmm? You just got to put your faith in him. You got to rely on what he did. Hmm? Hmm? Making a choice not only embodies the thought of relying on, it also embodies repentance. Luke 13, 3 says, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. A lot of people leave out repentance today. Repentance is telling God you're sorry for your sin. Repentance is a change in direction. You're going this way, and this way ends in hell. But you realize you need to make Jesus your choice, so instead of going this way, you just turn and make him your choice. Jesus, I'm believing on you. Forgive me of my sin. Hmm? Repenting, turning from the way you're headed, and turning to him. Hmm? You got to make a choice. Hmm? Used to, they you see bumper stickers: turn or burn, heaven or hell. Make your choice. There's no gray area. There's no purgatory. There's no. Uh, it's heaven or hell, friend. It's Jesus Christ or spending eternity with the devil and his angels. Hmm? Got to make a choice. It embodies relying on the Lord. That embodies repentance, but it also embodies receiving Him. John chapter number 1, verse 11 says, He came unto His own, His own received Him not. But thank God for verse 12. Hmm? But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. See, you've got to receive Him. Hmm? And you say, what, is, what do you mean? Well, we just had Christmas. Did we not? Uh, and Miss Melissa, if I came to you and said, Melissa, I got this wonderful Christmas present. It's wonderful. It's in your favorite cover colors. It's probably got a lot of colors because you wear a lot of colors. And, and it's wonderful. It's wrapped all nice and neat and everything. And Miss Melissa, I, I purchased this for you. It's a free gift. It costs you nothing. All you got to do is receive it. And if you sit there and look at it and say, well, I'll wait till there's an earthquake or I'll wait till it's a better day. Or I'll wait till it's a more convenient season. You don't receive it. You'll never enjoy the benefits of it. Hmm? See, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is to receive Him. See, He's reaching down to you right now with arms wide open. Said, "Here it is, eternal life. It's yours. Huh? Pardon from your sins. It's yours. Liberty and freedom and peace like you've never known. It's yours right here. But you've got to receive it. You've got to come and get it." Hmm? As long as you just let it sit there, it'll never benefit you. Hmm? You know why some are rejoicing in here today? They've received him. Hmm? You know why some haven't? They haven't received him. Hmm? It's free. Whosoever will may come. Jesus Christ made it possible because he tasted death for every man. He's already paid for your sins. You just got to receive him. Receive the pardon. Hmm? Uh, 
if the governor or the president was willing to give you a pardon for uh, uh, crimes you committed and was sitting in prison for, if you didn't pick up the phone and say, yes, Mr. Governor, yes, Mr. President, thank you, I'll, uh, I'll take your pardon, you'd rot in jail. Hmm? Jesus got something better than a pardon for your crimes. He's got forgiveness for your sins. My dear friends, what's connected with that is eternal life. In order to be saved, it takes conviction. It takes you making a choice. And then lastly, when somebody gets saved, there's a change. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You don't have to quit anything to get saved, but if you get saved, he'll change your heart, and you won't want to do some of the things you're doing. Mm. Uh, let me have some. I do everything I want to do. I drink all the booze I want to drink. I do all the dope I want to do. I do all the crowding around I want to do. I do. I do all that I want to do. There's just probably changed my want to. I don't want to do all of that. I want to come out and worship God and praise God. I want to pray and read the Word of God, sing songs of God. He changes everything about you from the inside out. Hmm? See, when you make Him your choice, He does for you what you can't do for yourselves. Hmm? He'll clean up your mouth. He'll change your want-tos. He, he, he changes your future. He changes everything. Huh? Galatians says this in Galatians 6, 14, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Paul said, uh, uh, don't brag on me. He said, everything in my life is because of Calvary. He said, but when Calvary came into my life, the world became crucified to me. He said, the things I used to do, I don't do anymore. It goes on to say this in verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything or uncircumcision. He said, uh, uh, the Jews claim they got circumcision. The heathens say they got uncircumcision. He said, in Christ, none of that matters. This is what he said. But a new creature. See, when you get born again, he makes a new creature out of you. I like that old song, the old man is dead. I may look a lot to sing, but inside, there's a whole new man here. Hmm? Uh, uh, you see, when he comes along, there's a change. Notice in this fellow, we'll be done. When one's saved, there'll be a change in attitude. Look at verse 33. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. This is a fellow that chained them up in prison. Now he's, he's taking, taking care of their wounds. Why? He's got a change in attitude. Used to, he looked at them as the enemy. Now he's looking at them. Thank God that God sent these fellows into my life. Thank God for the gospel. He's changed my life. I want to take care of God's men. Hmm? There's a change in attitude. There's a change in his actions. Look again at verse 33. And it said, and he was baptized. He and all his straightway. Huh? He got saved, and the first thing he wanted to do is he probably said the same thing Paul said. Lord, what would thou have me to do? Uh, 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 Paul said you need to get baptized uh, and go on and live for God. The first step in Christian obedience is baptism. Uh, uh, this fellow didn't even put it off. He said, hallelujah, God changed my life. Uh, uh, you can see it in my actions. I want to be baptized. He's got a new attitude. He's seen in his actions, but he's also got a new appetite. Look at verse 34. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. You see, now he has an appetite not for physical things, but for spiritual things. Hmm. You see, a lost crowd can't figure out how somebody in hospice can die in peace. How folks can come out on a cold day and shout the glory down. Now, folks in this building today are facing storms in their life, but yet they got such a sweet spirit about them. Mm -hmm. They drink from a different well, friend. They have a spiritual well bubbling up within them as you don't know anything about. They got living water in their soul. They have a new appetite. They have an appetite for spiritual things. And this fellow did because he met the Lord. Can I say, the only thing that really matters today is whether or not you're saved. And I can't help but think the Lord has walked through this place this morning to let you know you can be saved. He wants you to be saved. He died for your sin. He's already uh, guaranteed you an eternal life in heaven. He wants you to be there with Him for all of eternity. 
but the choice is yours. He came by this way to let you know you're a sinner, but you can be saved from your sins. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. If you're not saved, I'd run to this altar and trust Christ. I wouldn't let anybody or anything hinder me. Your eternal life may depend on it today. A minute ago, my family sang that song, I'm so blessed you couldn't sing that song because you don't know the Lord. But you can leave out singing it. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. But preacher, really, I, I, I don't really know how to be saved. If you come, we'll take a Bible, show you all the verses where you can put your faith in what God said. You can be saved today. That's all that fellow did. He believed what Paul and Silas said. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus. He said, okay. And he did. And he got born again. And it changed his life. And God will change your life today. Jesus never left anyone, anyone the way he found them. And he'll change your life. He'll give you peace, joy, hope, love like you've never known. But you've got to be willing to make him your choice. You've got to receive the gift of salvation and the gift of eternal life. It's yours for the asking. But you've got to come and give your faith and give your heart and put your faith in Jesus. Are you willing to do that today? Will you trust Jesus? Aren't you tired of being lost? Aren't you tired of having no hope? Aren't you tired of leave, living just a, a, an aimless life? Don't you want the peace of God? Aren't you tired of going to bed every night wondering if you died in your sleep, you'd die and go to hell? Wouldn't you like to have hope? If you died tonight, you'd spend eternity in Jesus, with Jesus in heaven. You can have eternal life. Will you make Jesus your choice? Why don't you come today? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're coming, let's pray. Friend, if you're lost, why don't you come? You say, I'm afraid, preacher. Just turn around to somebody and say, will you go to the altar with me? Just come. Don't leave here lost. Come and make Jesus your choice. Folks are coming to pray. There's room for you, friend. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for making salvation so simple even a child can understand. Lord, thank you for the good service you blessed us with. And thank you for making a way of salvation for sinners. Lord, I'm afraid there are folks here today not ready to meet you. Lord, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God just speak to their heart let them know today's the day. Help them to come. Put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Rely on you and repent. Repentance and faith, help them to come. Receive the gift of salvation. Lord, bless. Lord, have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Well, thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.